Okay, so I'm writing a paper on the exotic pet trade for a class in environmental bio. The first thing I would do normally is open Google Chrome because that's the best browser. Now, we've come to the home page. What I usually would do here is grab myself a snack and then sit back down. And I would just normally just type in the topic into the search bar. So exotic, oops, pet trade. From there, I kind of get a brief, a brief um, summary from here and there, sources on the topic at, at hand, uh, just to make sure I really want to focus on this topic for the class because this is my own little project. But so it talks about the increasing numbers that they're being sold online. It's just, it's exotic pets, meaning pets that are not supposed to be kept captive and such. Um, the topic is kind of self-explanatory, but the details on how it's conducted is why we're doing the research, because not very people under not not many people understand how that goes about. Like, how do you capture a whole tiger? Well, we're gonna find out today. <laughs> so, I've kind of like done a little brief uh, rundown on all the sites. I usually pull up a, another tab and go to. Georgia Southern's uh, library database. So I can also have a tab open for my scholarly articles. Because I feel, because scholarly, scholarly review, peer reviewed articles are one of the best forms, or one of the best types of sources because it's already been peer reviewed by somebody who has a credibility and a, like that type of knowledge on it. And, can, has confirmed this is this is good for research. So I would go to ch -ch 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 academics, and then I would go to ch -ch 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 oops mm. research 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 oh campus life, and then go to library. From there, I would go to on the right on the on the right side, um, I've been told, uh, I, I could also contact people who are experts on this subject, because that's some, one of the services George Southern offers, but, um, I'm confident I can handle this on my own, so I'd probably go to Discover Search, that's one of my favorites, and it just kind of gives you a temporary key to different sources and databases and websites that hold a lot of scholarly article. Um, like Galileo in a sense. So we're going to type in keywords. So exotic pet trade illegal because it is an illegal business. Um, and you could also, usually I would put, I could put a specific area um, such as like Africa because that's where it's done most because those are, that's where some of the fun animals that most people want are, but we're going to keep it global, so we're just going to keep it exotic pet trade illegal. Okay, and we're going to hit search. Now, we can't just go ahead and grab all this. You do have to make the limitations and filters, so I wouldn't want an article, as you can see, from 1815. I'm going to probably bring it up to around the 1990s or so. I'm going to give, yeah, 1990 to 2017. I'm going to give it a little, well, let's do, yeah, keep it at that. Give it a little bit of history. And then you see right above it, it has scholarly peer-reviewed. And you also have the option to have the online full text only. But we, I, it doesn't really matter. It's best, I find that it's best to keep it open because you don't want to limit yourself on the information you need. So I click scholarly peer-reviewed and it's updating it and suddenly you're not able to see. See, the first one is still there, but we now know it's an academic journal, and it's actually been verified and peer-reviewed, versus um, picking something, doing a full paper and such on it, and research on it, and then finding out that it's not as credible as you thought. Then you'd have to redo everything. Um, you do have options to have magazines and books and such on the side, but I, I just want to keep it to journals, personally. And you could do language and such as well, but I I never find trouble on that usually. So, what's well, fine now? 
as of right now, I'm trying to find an article and sources that like cover the basics, like where it's often done, who does it, like the poachers and such and such. If I find one that has a specific area, then I'll just focus on the area. Crime gone wrong. This article discusses economic um, in Latin America and Africa. See, we already found something that's a little broad for us. Hopefully, it has more detail. See, and it already tells you Harvard International Review. So, um, crime gone wrong, dangers of international legal wildlife trade. Okay. And it gives you details about things here and there. It has different features. And based on the description, I know it focused on the Latin the Latin America and African um, area, so that's a, one area we can focus on. Um, like, like here, it says certain Mexican cartels are often used in luxury, are often suspect. Certain Mexican cartels have been suspected of attempting to smuggle totoba fish out of the country to East Asian markets, where their livers are a major delicacy and can be commit can, and can command prices of up to um, fourteen thousand U.S. dollars a piece. That's something you wouldn't really find on, like, um, a blog or something. And if you do find it, you can't verify that it's been well-researched. So that's one I'll probably keep. Now, before we continue, let me go back, because at this point I probably um, read through the whole thing and got kind of tired of looking at the discovery section. So then I go to Google to help me find more articles. And what I usually type is, like research right after as we are conducting research so you want other sources so I, I don't um, neglect websites and stuff so I kind of pull up oh sorry it's supposed to be tabs okay we're just gonna do it like this then um, so it's the wildlife, wildlife research and conservation but uh, I've been taught that uh, the reason why I chose this um, link before I continue is because it is a wildlife research and conserva conservation. So you, you kind of get a based on those keywords, you can tell that they're into like um, restoring wildlife, keeping it safe, and you know conserving its um, natural state versus taking a whole alligator and making it your pet. So. This kind of, this appears to be like a blog. Um, this user who posted it kind of has a tinnel. He has a, uh, I believe that's a username. I'm going to click on it. Um, he, to make sure, he has written other articles, but this does seem to be more of a blog site just based on appearance. Um, the structure of the website isn't, it's, it's fine. It's not bad. It's not an eyesore. However, it's not. It doesn't appear as academic, per se. And you can leave a reply or comment a post and such and such. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to leave this because it looks like somebody... It looks like as if I had my own blog and posted this information. It's not wrong, but how do you know that? Per, like, Because it also didn't list the sources. So that's something you want to be very aware of. So if it doesn't relist the sources... Um, Usually, it's just off of thought or like their own research. Even sources like Wikipedia, um, I've been taught that Wikipedia is not a real source, but Wikipedia can be helpful because it lists all their sources. So if you go to Wikipedia and look up the subject at hand, what you need to do is read through it to get your own personal understanding. But areas you want to look, seek more knowledge in, go to the sources down below and follow those. So, National Geographic is a website that is very well known, so I'll pull that one. Um, I try to look for .org or .edu, because I've also been taught that those are um, good sources, but even then you still have to be wary of what they put up. Um, PETA is, of course, a popular one, so I will grab that one. And that one is something I would personally uh, keep. Because Pete is well known for their work in wild in wildlife, and just I mean, it's Peta. <laughs> uh, 
However, I'll probably... It, you can see as we write their information, despite how, like, friendly and, like, nice and little cute, see the website is every single bullet, almost, almost every single topic has another source leading up to it. And it leads it back down. It's from book sources. Some of them are from, like, our magazine articles. Some of them are from uh, National Geographic, but they do list all the sources. So, if by sort like, if you were to pull information from here, you can just source back to this web page and those who are like wanting to look deeper into it they can find all this information as well so i'm probably going to keep pia um let's look at the national geographic one no thanks and scroll down no oh, he looks so sad i'm sorry little monkey okay continue Okay, and this one, National Geographic, I've noticed uh, from past research, they always do a good job of letting you know who the writers are um, to keep you up to date on that. Um, so, they do have to make it a little more theatrical in their writing and make it captivating. So it's not like, ter like serious terminology or anything. So it makes it a little easier to read for me as well. It does list statistics and such for, like, reptiles and birds and mammals and things of that nature. And it sources it at the bottom as well. So this one that we're looking at right now came from the, um, from Cambridge in the UK. What is it? The UNET World Conservation Monitoring Center in Cambridge. And I use... Okay. And they just have different sources. I'm trying to scroll to the let's scroll all the way to the bottom to see if they have anything down there. Um, no, it doesn't appear that it has anything down here, but it does tell you and give you details about the writer. So that's something you can always write um, into your research um, paper. Papers you could have like you could have the minimum of three or four, or you can put ten different sources. The what oh, matters, what I found that matters in a paper is making sure that each one has some kind of role. Even if it's to build the the vibe or the mentality of the paper, it's still it's still helpful. But if you use something like this as a main um, source and the main foundation of a paper, you're not going to have a strong paper simply because it, it can have a lot of loopholes or people can poke holes into it. Um, now, um, before I continue, since I've pulled up a lot of pages and a lot of things, what what I'll probably do is open a sticky note. I usually email myself these in white exotic pet trade research sources and underline it and then put bullets of each link. But for now, I'm just going to pull a sticky note. I'm going to enlarge it. I'm going to bring it out here and make it bigger. And then each time, I'll just copy and paste the link. Oh, there we go. That's why. Okay. Next. So I'll also do this one, PETA. And then for this one, you have to make sure you pull the permalink that they pro provide you because it kind of acts as your key. And that's something I like about scholarly articles because it's like, as a student, you get a lot of sources. So it's best, like, doing undergrad research and stuff is always great because you have more access to things than the normal person would. So take advantage of it. Okay. Go back to the article. Um, trying to look at the topics. Uh, you'll see that all the bolded areas are things that you've talked about. Um, or that we write, wrote as the keywords. That's what, exactly why they popped up. But, you still, even then, some of these do not apply. Uh, such as the dragons and our mists. Um, the phil the philo forensics of illegally traded southeastern, southeast Asian monitor lizard. While that is a late, um, exotic pet trading, that's too specific for us to use, so we have to look over that. Um, we can look at this one, where it talks about um, putting animals back together. If that kind of sounds too broad for you, you would skip down to the description. Or I would, sorry, I would usually skip down to description and kind of look more into it. Um, 
So each year, the da 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 in Guatemala, the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Guatemala receives blah 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 blah. What's that?